Hey, what's up guys? Well, it's 2017 and it's that time again. Yearly budget build video. Now what that means is we're gonna build a seventh generation gaming rig as cheap as possible while maintaining decent or high level hardware. Now what I call a budget build is an open architecture machine that while it plays everything now, maybe a year or two from now, it won't. And allows us to basically pop in a new CPU or a new graphics card without having to use maybe a Dell proprietary motherboard or all-in-one unit. But this year came in right at um, $100 less than last year's build video. So let's dig in I'll show you what we got. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the hardware. Um, we're going to start off with a EVGA 450 watt power supply. And I'm going to put the, the prices to everything on the side. Next, we have an NVIDIA GTX 1050 OC Edition. And you'll see why I got the OC Edition here shortly. I got an Intel i3. Uh, 7350k unlocked and instead of going with the stock Intel fan I opted for the um, Arctic Alpine it's very quiet very large and it should allow us to do some overclocking if we need it now let's go back to the CPU <laughs> the CPU was a hundred and forty eight dollars and with the Alpine it dropped it it bumped it up to about 155 now for $30 more, we could have came in with an i5, probably 7300 maybe, but I know it was 30 bucks more. So take that into consideration, but I think this right here is going to do us everything that we need. You can actually go down to an unlocked i3 and save 20, 30 bucks. We have eight gigs of DDR4 2133 megahertz RAM. A Kenta, uh, King Spec. I think it's actually a. Uh, no. Yep, King Spec. Uh, 128 SSD drive. Now, I've never really heard of this name before, but I don't have any problems out of it, and it's performing very well. And finally, we have our Gigabyte H110M motherboard now this is a very very bare motherboard and we'll get into that in a minute but it basically has everything you need except Wi-Fi no Wi-Fi no Bluetooth but for what I'm building this for it's not a problem so let's dig in I'm gonna show you some of the specs and the machine All right, let's just take a look at a few of the features of the motherboard like I said, it is very bare and what I mean by bare you're not gonna find eight SATA ports you're not gonna find four the SIM sockets, it's pretty bare, but it has everything that you need. You've got four SATA connections, so you've got one for your SSD and one for your three and a half inch drive. Now, if you want to add more drives, you've got two additional SATA slots. You have, like, when I order the memory instead of getting two fours, I got one eight, and that allows me to upgrade the memory later by adding an additional SIM into the open slot. We've got onboard USB 3.0, two USB 2.0s, uh, PCI Express X16, and I do believe you've got some X8 over there too. In the back, let's take a look. You've got your old school PS2 keyboard and mouse, HDMI, which I have covered up, two USB 3.0s, two USB 2.0s, two more USB 2.0s, which I'm not sure why. Uh, gigabit Ethernet and sound. We're using uh, the HDMI from the GTX 1050. Now unfortunately this cheap TV I have does not support sound through HDMI from the PC so I have to use speakers. But not bad for a $54 motherboard and the case what I like about the case is everything is set on top. You have all your USBs on top, sound, mic, power, reset, USB 3.0. It's not on the front, it's on the top except for your power button which is on the front. It's not a big deal. 
definitely well worth the $24. All right, so as you can see, everything is up and running. We got our Windows 64 uh, bit key, professional edition off of eBay for like $8, for real, eight bucks. Um, I was gonna go to King one, but somebody said go to eBay and see if you can get a key there. And sure enough, I got it for eight bucks and like 10 cents. So uh, we got Windows 64 up and running. We've got a few games running. We got a benchmark going, but let's dig in and see how well Hyperspin runs, our emulators run, PC games run, and let's see how fast it boots. Loading complete. Naruto, you're tri- Ah, uh, I- you're I- Don't- So as you can see, PlayStation 2 ran just fine. No hiccups, no flaws, no delays. I'm gonna skip PlayStation 1 because the EPSXE emulator as well as the uh, Retro Art Core runs flawlessly. We're gonna move on to Dreamcast now. Loading game. All right, we're going to give Sega Saturn a test. Now, this is one that I always test the system if the emulator is not co configured correctly. This is currently running the RetroArch core, and that core generally doesn't run as efficient as Yabu's, but we're going to give it a whirl, and I think you're going to be surprised how well it plays.
Now this is RetroArch with no filters, no shaders, just straight core settings. I have no idea how to play this game. As you can see, it's running very well. We're going to test Nintendo Wii now. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there's no Bluetooth, so we're going to have to use Loading the game. emulated nunchuck and Wii mode using the 360 controller, which doesn't work very well, but a Bluetooth dongle is maybe five bucks. So I just want to see how well the game loads, are there any artifacts, Loading and complete. how well the graphics look. Well, obviously, I don't know how to play that game, but as you can see, the graphics are great. We're going to move Lovely on to the game. GameCube. Alright, this is one part of their title I personally have never played, but let's see how well it plays. So there you have it guys, you've got a really nice machine for under 600 bucks and if you throw a three and a half inch drive you can add that cost to it but you may have a one or two laying around so you know you've got a lot of money already into your arcade you don't want to throw another couple grand if you don't have it so I might as well build a budget machine you're going to get very very close if not the same to game performance all the emulators run at 60 frames per second you will not be dissatisfied so for 600 bucks there you go hope that helps and we'll do another budget build next year